Hi, I'm Julie Weber of Liberate Ministries, and today's topic is called Three Robes. All information is quoted from My Lady Liberty Workbook on pages 102 through 103. Well, my husband likes to watch sci-fi, and it always amazes me the way movie writers try to portray the supernatural world. In this superhero era, their idea of what the supernatural life should look like and act like is quite funny. There are many variations of how the supernatural is portrayed. In these types of movies, you see everything from out-of-body experiences, walking dead zombies, weird alien bodies, and powerful suits of clothing. The superheroes are usually physically weak until they put on those powerful suits of clothing. Then they get the supernatural power so they can fight all evil to save whatever alien body they represent. When Jesus moved in the supernatural, his results created healing for the human body. Hands went from deformity to holistic state. Eyes went from blindness to seeing. Ears went from deafness to hearing. The dead was raised up and brought back to life. His acts of the supernatural was always restoring the human body to a complete holistic state. It isn't mentioned that Jesus put on a powerful suit of clothing to perform these acts of miracles. However, his clothing is mentioned when he dies and after when he comes back to life. Let's look at three robes. The first one is a natural linen robe. I'm not just going to put that on. It says in John 19, 23, when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from the top to bottom. It was the custom of the time for Jewish mothers to give their sons a robe when they left home. We don't know for certain that Mary did this for Jesus, but we do know that the robes were special because they were one piece with no seams, perfectly integrated from the top down. Just like Jesus, who was perfect in this life and was perfectly integrated with his Father God. The robe could have been the one that the soldiers took from Jesus and divided among them when he was crucified. The red robe. Okay. Let's look at the red robe as a representation of what Jesus did for us at the cross. His seamless robe was divided and taken away by the soldiers. He then put on this red robe of sin that had all our names pinned on it. He wore this red robe of sin on the cross. He was crucified as a, a common criminal he died for us. He died instead of us. His blood was shed for us. Okay. Let's look at the brilliant, shiny white robe. This brilliant, shiny white robe is a representation of the robe Jesus wore when he was resurrected three days after he was buried in the tomb. The blood and the sin of the red robe are gone. He is now clothed in righteousness. Brilliant, shiny white robe. 
This is the robe that Jesus will wear when he returns. His sacrificial death for us allows us to also wear his righteousness. This is the garment of salvation referred to in Isaiah 61.10. So putting on the brilliant shiny white robe is what allows us to be a new being in Christ. Isaiah 61.10 I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. The robe analogy is especially important for post-abortion, post-abortive women. Until healing has taken place, they tend to stand in the red robe forever before God. The weight of sin, the shame, and the unforgiveness keep them there, even though God is waiting to help them put on the brilliant shiny white robe of his righteousness. Old self-thinking versus a new self-thinking. God's principles for transformed thinking can be applied to many situations and obstacles. For the purpose of your post-abortive healing, we are going to focus on clothing yourself based on your new identity in Christ, which is found in God's Word. The Bible is full of scripture about clothing yourself. In these next three scriptures, we are instructed to take something off or to put something new on. For example, you can clothe yourself in righteousness, in faithfulness, or humility. Isaiah 11.5 He will put godliness on as if it were his belt. He'll wear faithfulness around his waist. And Psalm 109.16 is actually talking about the wicked. He wore cursing as his garment. It entered into his body like water, into his bones like oil. And Colossians 3.9-11 Don't lie to one another. You're done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you've stripped off and put in the fire. Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the Creator with His label on it. All the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, Insider and outsider, uncivilized and uncouth, slave and free, mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. So in Ephesians, we read that there is an old way of thinking and a renewed way of thinking. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. That in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. If we do clothe ourselves based on God's word, like we just read in Ephesians, God will renew the attitudes of our mind. Let me pray for you. Dear God, help us reset our lives as we put on the brilliant, shiny white robe of his righteousness 
that allows us to be a new being in Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did at the cross so that all of this could happen. Amen. Thanks for watching. Live life liberated.